Hey everybody, Meriden Gaming here, and it's time for another build video. Today we're going to be focusing on Flak and my Shielded Survivability build. Uh, this is using the newest uh, Season 2 Pass uh, skill tree and the new Loader pet. Uh, there's a few different versions of the pet, of course, and we'll take a look at those real quick. Let's have a look. So the new skill tree is called Trapper. Uh, this gives you a new ability called the Gravity Snare. Now what this does is it allows you to toss, up a toss out a trap that knocks up enemies and stuns them temporarily. So every so many seconds, I think it's like three seconds, it knocks them up into the air. So they lose their targeting and whatnot and you're able to attack them. Um, and then as long as it remains out, which the duration is 16 seconds by default, uh, it will continue to knock them up into the air every three seconds or so. Then we also have the new pet ion loader. Um, the basic one is, has a sniper rifle uh, that shoots uh, humming shock orbs uh, that can be be shot to trigger shock novas, which just kind of plays into you know my standard um, whatever you call that the the combination of the uh, transfusion shield or not transfusion. You know what I'm talking about. The uh, the shield that gives you 100% resistance to shock, but heals your shields for all your, um, um, yeah, all the shock damage you do. So it kind of plays into that. Um, but I found, and if you're having trouble surviving, that's one of the best options. But I actually like uh, the third version, which is the War Loader. Uh, this gives him an incendiary shotgun, which isn't great. So you are going to have to help him with the armored targets. Um, and a little bit of the um, shielded targets, but it gives him the ability to throw in your grenades. And he uses the exact same grenades that you have equipped, so you have to really be selective about what you use, um, but he is like 100% accurate with them. I, I don't know about you, but I'm not the best uh, shot with grenades, but your loader hits him every time. But then the other added benefit is when you issue the attack command, he shoots a barrage of missiles, which will take down even some of the badass uh, targets, probably about, a, well, half their red health. Um, it takes down shield and and armor as well, but it really eats through the, the standard health. Um, and we, we're kind of, we're trying to make it to where we can use uh, the attack command more often with this build, just so we can get the added benefit. Uh, the third option you have here is uh, the bull loader. Uh, basically, it gains uh, damage resistance and a melee attack, and it uses a uh, shotgun. Um, this is more for crowd control, because when you issue the attack command, he goes, turns to a bulldozer and runs straight towards the enemy and uh, knocks him into the air. This works probably better with a team. You know me, I do solo, so it's not as useful. Anyway, um, and of course, this one, whenever you issue the attack command, it shoots its eye laser. So... It's okay, but not great. And then each one of these gives a benefit to Flak. Uh, the first one being elemental resistance. So if you're fighting a lot of elemental enemies, and like I said, if you're having trouble surviving, this gives you the, those extra shock stuff to help keep your shields topped off. Uh, and then uh, the bull loader gives you shield capacity, which is also handy, uh, but I found him not to be as useful. And then the war loader gives you fire rate. All right, so let's get to the actual build. So we're going to put five points into Gotta Go Fast. Uh, this increases the movement speed of your pet, but more importantly, 40% damage bonus. This is what gives your pet some killing ability. Uh, this is more of a, a build where you're both doing the killing. Uh, so it does uh, take, take both you and your pet to really take down those enemies. It's not as fast as some of my other builds at taking down enemies, but it it survives like I literally never had to take cover for the most part you pretty much just walk around and just shoot stuff uh, so it's a very beginner friendly build um, if you don't want to have to worry about taking cover and you know placing your shots well and stuff like that then we put uh, three points into agility training uh, this just gives you uh, faster reload speed and your pet faster reload speed uh, th that's just it's really better with the ion uh, loader uh, with a sniper rifle because it does take them a while to reload uh, the shotgun's not quite as as effective because it seems like he reloads pretty quick, but it's just a little added benefit. Uh, then we're going to put one point into better toys. Uh, this increases your shield recharge rate and shield recharge delay, although I'm not taking cover, so um, I think I just put one point here in order to get me up to the next level. 
um, at the time, which you could probably take this point out um, and put it somewhere else because we did end up uh, adding points here. That will get us up to the next level. Uh, so that's a floater point. Uh, then we're going to put one point into combat veteran. Whenever Flak shoots the same enemy as his pet is attacking, uh, the pet gains a portion of the damage dealt back as health. Uh, this is just one of those uh, quality of life mods for your pet to keep them up. Uh, this would work really well with other pets um, if you don't want to use the loader as well. Uh, then we're going to put three points into Throat Ripper. Uh, basically, it gives your pet an, a, a chance to do critical hits. Uh, this would also work well with other pets um, for this big hit damage. Uh, then we're going to put one point into Lethal Force Authorized. Uh, whenever Fleck, Flack's Loader Bot pet, so that means you do have to be using the loader for this, we're going to fight for your life. Instead, it turns into an explosive loader and runs uh, towards the nearest enemy before self-destructing, dealing damage. In a large radius and that is a lot of damage it also uh, decreases the respawn time so it takes half as long to respawn uh, but like I said you have to have the loader bot for your pet to be for this to be useful um, and actually I don't think my pet ever went down in testing so uh, with the combination that we're going to be using it pretty much stays up all the time uh, then we're going to put one point into take this and that's why we had to put more points down here was because there's only two points worth of skills here. Uh, basically, your pet gets a copy of your shield, which we're going to be using uh, the electric shield that gives us um, the ability to gain shield back whenever we are doing shock damage. So that's very handy. Uh, it keeps your pet topped off. Uh, then uh, we're gonna put four points into Monkey Do. Uh, basically, your pet gains uh, critical hit damage bonus um, and whenever they score a critical hit, your next shot deals bonus damage based on your weapon's damage. Um, so that's pretty handy, um, especially with the whole uh, they do a critical, they have a percentage chance. Pretty much, if you're if you're going to have this, you really want to have the throat ripper as well. Uh, then we put one point into woolly armor. Uh, basically, if your shields are full, your pet gains damage reduction. Which, uh, I, especially with the war loader, uh, he was taking a lot more of the aggro than I was. So my shields were pretty uh, topped off. Um, especially if you start taking cover, uh, where I tend not to with this build because I really didn't have to. Uh, that could give your pet, you know, a, a really big bonus. Then we put three points into not even a challenge. Uh, whenever your pet kills an enemy, uh, you gain increased action skill duration and action skill cooldown rate. Uh, with a stack effect. This comes into play with the final skill of this uh, uh, tree. Uh, then we put five points into fuzzy moth or fuzzy math. Uh, whenever your uh, you or your pet score a critical hit, a portion of both your shields are restored. So basically if you're getting those headshots, you're constantly restoring your shield, which plays really well into the deathless build that we're using here. Uh, then we put five points into keep them safe. Uh, whenever you issue an attack command, if Flak or his pet shield is less than half full, you gain a portion of your shields back over a sh uh, you know, with a slight cooldown rate. So basically, you want to be activating that to top yourself off all the time because it gives you 50% of your max shields restored if your shields are less than half. And then finally, the coup de gras of this build, this lovely little uh, when, uh, ca uh, capacitance. Whenever Flak activates their action skill, they gain greatly increased shield capacity for a short time, immediately begin recharging their shields. Especially when you're going to those big boss fights or you're entering a room with a ton of enemies, you throw out your action skill and you gain 100% shield capacity. That is awesome. So basically, you go from, I think we're starting off at, at about 80% thousand shield uh, with this current build because of the uh, whatever you call it the shield I'm using so you go up to hundred and sixty thousand shield and especially when you're using electric weapons with the combination we're going with it just constantly you, you have ridiculous amounts of shield like you cannot get one shot at it it is awesome all right next we're going to go on to the master uh, tree uh, we put five points into ferocity straight pet damage bonus so you always want that uh, that is from my uh, class mod so we're going to ignore that uh, we put three points into who rescues who whenever uh, flax pet deals damage flax regenerates health and whenever 
black deals damage to an enemy the pet's health is uh, re uh, restored as well so that's just a it's mainly to keep your uh, pet topped off with their health because um, we are using a deathless uh, artifact so we have one health uh, but it is nice to keep your pet up because he takes a lot of the aggro uh, then we put two points into he bites uh, basically he reflects damage so especially if he's got the aggro he's going to be doing he or she i don't know if a loader is male or female anyway uh they reflect damage back so that's where um you do a lot of, of damage as well especially when he's got all the aggro of multiple enemies uh, then we put two points into frenzy uh, whenever uh, flax pet deals damage uh, their pet gains a stack of frenzy each stack of frenzy increases damage now this is that combination i like to use because the he bites uh, triggers the frenzy as well so you're constantly uh, doing increased damage with your pet so that's always handy we put one point into psycho head on a stick whenever uh, flat kills an enemy the pet gains increased movement speed and damage for a few seconds always a great uh, option to keep that pet damage boost up uh, then we put three points into hive mind whenever flat takes damage a portion of all damage is shared to their pet instead and the pet deals bonus damage for a short time so even if you are getting targeted this will help keep uh, you from going down uh, this is what really makes you survivable uh, because your pet does have quite a bit of shield and health as well uh, then we put three points into barbaric yop uh, basically it gives you a straight bonus to all your other things for your pet um, that are granted to flax so the whole um, like this one where a portion of your damage is given to the pet it takes more so always a great combination to have uh, whenever uh, flax pet is or yeah one point into mutated defenses whenever flax pet is at low health it gains damage reduction and regenerates health uh, of course this goes a lot cooldown uh, basically it's just to keep it up longer uh, with that extra um, yeah damage reduction then we put three points into pack tactics all damage dealt by Flack and their pet is increased so this is basically just a straight up damage boost and a health boost for your pet so that's always handy um, and then uh, one point to shared spirit while flak is at low health a portion of all damage they take is converted into healing for the pet guess what we're we have the deathless artifact so we are at one health all the time so this basically it's constantly healing your pet like if you watch in the clips that are of the gameplay you can see th this pet is getting healed all the time so that's always a great combination to have all right we didn't put any points into hunter but we did put a few extra points into stalker uh, mainly to increase uh... oh actually i didn't need those points there because i didn't think about going deathless until after so uh, those are floater points you can put them anywhere um, i would actually probably put uh, a couple more points somewhere else but um, the Three points into Sikkim, uh, attack command has lowered cooldown and increased damage. Uh, of course, your attack, uh, this is always great to have your attack command um, cool down faster just so you can cast it more and more often to get that bonus uh, shield regeneration. So with those extra two points, I think I would probably put them probably into the damage reflection and the uh, max frenzy. So we put two points there. But anyway, um, let's get to the gameplay. Of course, we're going, going to be going to Athenus because there's a wide variety of enemies, shielded, armored, uh, and whatnot. Um, I did not realize that apparently there was an update recently and it took out the, um, whatever you call those, the Mayhem 10 uh, modifiers. So I'm not exactly sure what they were when I was fighting, um, but it was not what I was used to. So yeah. Um, of course, I wasn't doing critical hit damage. I was doing straight damage. Turn okay. So this was the set that we we ended up using just because I was not aware that they had changed. Uh, but yeah, so let's get to the gameplay. We'll be you know on Athena's and then we'll fight Captain Tron. Like I said, not the most damaging build, but it did. Uh, I did. I was able to stay out in front of him the whole time because the pet was taking aggro some too, but not going down at all. I mean, as long as you're doing shock damage, you're pretty much up all the time. Uh, actually, we do need to go over the weapons first, don't we? All right, so, um, of course, we're going to be going with my Transformer Shield. This is my absolute favorite combination, the Transformer. Uh, this is actually a new one. 
Um, this one actually gives a bonus to any character instead of the one that had the Sentinel uh, anointed skill. Uh, basically on action skill end, damage reduction is uh, reduced by 13% for a short time, so that's very handy over the other one that we had, but it's still the 42,000, so very handy. And then the Deathless. Of course, I love this combination of the uh, Transformer and the Deathless mod um, because you're basically constantly refilling your shield as long as you're using shock weapons. Um, for the um, class mod, uh, the one that I was really going for was the uh, Flak and, and your pet deal 35% additional damage against enemies above uh, 75%. I didn't really have a good class mod, um, so it, it's really kind of up to you what you want to put here. Because um, anything I had, there really wasn't that much of a bonus. And then, like I said, your shield, you want to have something uh, that benefits both you and your pet. Because your pet, at least if you're using the Warloader, throws these grenades. If you look at this one, it heals shields for 60% of damage dealt. So that's a very handy... Um, combination. I believe that's the power portion of the siphon transfusion tracker uh, and this also tracks the enemies too. So this is a great combination with these three so you'll pretty much be seeing these over and over again in most of my builds just because every time I find something that works really well because um, you know me I'm all about solo play and survivability over damage um, although damage can be a way of surviving if you kill everything before they can kill you. Uh, but anyway, yeah. And then as far as weapons go, like I said, it's you want to have some shock weapons. Uh, I did find the the lovely uh, Killer Wisp. Uh, I was playing with my friend earlier, and she has one that does. I think it's the double Killer Wisp or the dual Killer Wisp, where it shoots out two balls that basically have chain lightning coming off of them, and of course that shock damage, which refills our shield. So that's a great combination. And of course, I always have the Thunderball Fist with this. Um, but basically any uh, shock weapon will work. And then you also want to have uh, some sort of corrosive weapon to help take down those armored enemies because your uh, loader does not do all that well, uh, doesn't deal damage to those loaders all that well. Uh, but yeah, anyway, but like I said, uh, it really, the, the grenade mod, you want to have something that's going to work really well. I found another good combination with the loader before I picked up this one in the... I don't know if it was in this play session or the last play session, but um, with him having pretty much 100% accuracy with grenades, fastballs are awesome. He just nails those enemies right in the head every time. It's hilarious watching them. But anyway, uh, yeah, let's get to that gameplay now. Uh, like I said, we're going to be on Athenus. I'll probably speed up the uh, the, the first couple of videos. Uh, first, we start off with the ion loader, uh, kind of showing you what he does. Um, I don't think he ever goes down. And then we switch to the war loader for the second set of enemies and or the second clip and then fighting uh, Captain Tront. Um, and it does take us a little while to get Captain Tront down. Like I said, not a damage uh, build. It's more of a survivability build. But it's kind of one of those uh, all-rounder builds. You can take down enemies fairly well, but um, you also don't go down ever. So anyway, let's get to that gameplay. All right, so I did uh, speed up the gameplay. It's about double the normal speed. Um, but as you can see, we're <laughs> using this lovely shotgun that creates lightning sh uh, bolts uh, towards all the enemies. I'm not taking cover. I'm just issuing attack commands whenever I can to get my keep my shield up uh, from that ability. And now switch to my thunderbolt fist. I mean, look at that. Like I'm barely going down. Now I've used my uh, action skill, and you see my uh, shield went up to 127 for a short period of time. Um, of course, it's much longer when you're playing uh, in full in normal speed. It's roughly 16 seconds or so. Uh, actually, I think I might maybe boost it up to 18 seconds. Uh, it's all based on the duration of your action okay. skill. But yeah, basically, this kill a wisp thing is awesome when there's a lot of enemies to deal with at one time. And there's my skill again. Gets my shield up. But yeah, look at this. I'm not really even taking damage, or taking, or going down. I'm just sitting here trying to dish out as much damage as I can. Sticking my uh, drone, or my loader, onto whatever is the most uh, critical thing to get down first. Uh, just because 
Well, at least on this one, he's using the ion loader, so it's not quite as critical. Um, but it does give you that uh, boost to shield uh, regen. Yeah, see, now I'm having to augment my pet because he couldn't deal with the armor on that character or on that enemy. Probably need something that does fire damage too. Uh, I did not equip something. Uh, just to help burn down those enemies once you get to the red portion of their health bars. Um, get this guy, and then we're going to skip ahead, and we're going to be using the war loader now. So yeah, once again using that Kilowisp with that AoE chain lightning. Great for those uh, where there's multiple enemies. And you see, he started to throw my grenade here. I was using an epicenter grenade at the time. Um, so you see, he uses whatever mod you have equipped. And then I decided to switch my grenade to kind of give you an idea of, or to show what it does exactly. Um, and if you ever get an, if I ever get another angle, uh, pay attention to my. Um, whatever you call it, my loader, because you'll see that he's constantly regenerating health uh, due to the, a few of the skill combinations we've got going on. And you see now he's going to be using the, uh, whenever I issue the attack command, he'll be using that rocket. Uh, the problem is with those rockets, they don't arc up and down, they pretty much take a straight line. So you want to make sure, if you can, that he has a clear line of sight to those enemies. Uh, they do arc down a little bit, but they're not... Yes, if you if you watch there for a second, you see my pet uh, regenerating health due to me having... Uh, I forgot what combination it was, but yeah. It's a great combination. Now we're going to stick him on them. And you can see, look how much damage that did whenever uh, his rocket attack came in. I see there he was regenerating a lot of health again. But I'm not taking cover. I mean, I'm just sitting out there constantly regenerating health, or constantly regenerating shields, as long as I'm doing shock damage. And I need a better, a more accurate um, corrosive weapon. I need to do some farming here uh, this coming week, which I plan on doing to get a few better weapons um, that are more focused. And yeah, I'm just grabbing everything. All right, and now we're going to jump to the fight with Captain Trant. So, if I hit him. See, uh, he doesn't do quite as much damage against shield as you can see. It probably did maybe an eighth of his shield. Here it comes again. You can hear it coming because it makes that whistling missile sound. Here it comes. Yep. And yeah, I pretty much just stay moving uh, to stay out of those pools of, of lava, but like you can see, I am not taking cover. I'm just right out here in the middle, which, um, especially in a solo build, is very uh, is a very great uh, way to be able to play. Um, you can take cover if you wanted to, but you don't have to. But yeah, and he's about to go down. Like I said, I need some, a fire weapon with this combination, too. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed the build. Uh, like I said, uh, it's a great survivability build if you're going for solo play. If you're not doing solo play, though, you could uh, forego the uh, Transformer Shield and uh, the Deathless mod and, and try to go for something more utilitarian to assist your allies. Um, but to me, I found if I'm staying up, that's always a great combination because I can revive... My, my allies pretty well um, with the ability of having that extra um, survivability from the shield. I just throw down my action skill, which boosts my shield up to 100%, and revive my ally uh, while they are downed. Anyway, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you have any builds uh, you want to see or focuses you want to see, even around specific weapons, I really want to try to do uh, manufacturer builds. Uh, here coming up soon, because um, I'm really loving a few of the TDRs. 
I normally didn't like those, but there's some really funny combinations that you can do to where you have like little minions running around you or guns floating over your head while you have these little spider things running around. So it's really cool. Anyway, um, yeah, this is Meriden Gaming, and I will see you in the wasteland.